Wow, we have been testing three of these new AMD Zen 5 laptops for the past two weeks, and I must say, I am really impressed with what we've found. Since I value your time, I'm not going to make you watch this whole video which is jam-packed with intense data. Instead, I'm just going to tell you what we found right now. These new Zen 5 processors are faster and more power efficient than their prior generation. In an identical laptop, moving from an AMD Zen 4 processor to a Zen 5 one, it should result in less fan noise, less heat you feel, longer battery life, and better performance. Compared to Qualcomm's new Snapdragon processors, which you've probably heard a lot of people hyping up right now in terms of how efficient they are, these processors are better. They are just as power efficient, and their multi-core performance is just as strong. However, AMD's single core performance is better than Qualcomm's, which will make many tasks and applications feel a bit snappier. Also, these new AMD processors have better graphics than Qualcomm's, their MPUs are more powerful, and because these AMD processors use the standard x86 architecture, there are no issues with software compatibility. Compared to Windows laptops with Intel's Core Ultra, these Zen 5 processors just dominate. Compared with Apple's M3 series, Apple is still in the lead, continuing to deliver better power efficiency and better performance, particularly in graphics and single core. That being said, AMD has closed the gap quite a lot. However, for most of these AMD processors' lives, they will likely be competing with Apple's upcoming M4 MacBooks, which I predict will once again widen the gap in favour of Apple. But, but, but. A laptop is the sum of its parts, and its value is determined by its price and what you use it for. Just having one of these new processors inside your laptop does not necessarily make it better than laptops with other processors. For example, take these new ZenBook S16s, for sure. Some people will really like them, but we don't feel as a whole they're the most mind-blowing laptop out there. On the flip side, the new ProArt PX13 is mind-blowing and an extremely special laptop. If you want to buy it, link will be below this video. And with that said, here is why we came to those conclusions. Alright, AMD are launching three new Zen 5 processors. They're Ryzen AI9, HX375, the 370, and the 365. I hate how companies feel that they need to brand their products with AI. These processors are certainly no Skynet. Anyway, this is the first time that AMD has introduced different types of cores. AMD doesn't call them performance or efficient cores like Apple or Intel does, but we're going to do that anyway because it's easier to differentiate them. The main differences between the SKUs is the top HX375 has the most efficient cores, the fastest 890M graphics, and the fastest MPU at 55 tops. The next chip down, the HX370, drops its MPU to 50 tops, but it's identical otherwise. The lower tier 365 processor has two less efficient cores, runs slightly slower, has less cache, and a significantly slower integrated graphics. Compared with Intel, it is good to see that AMD has kept these new chips at a max CPU temperature of 100 Celsius. Intel raised theirs with Core Ultra to 110. So, some of their performance increase is actually due to their chips running hotter. Look. It may seem like you can compare these processors from different series based on core count, gigahertz, and that sort of thing, but you really can't. Each of them executes instructions in a different way. So let's see how they actually perform. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, you can see that these processors perform very well. Single core scores are a huge improvement over the prior Zen 4 range. In fact, Zen 5 is now second to Apple's M3 series. In multi-core, you can see that the HX370 processor performs much better in the ProArt than it does in the ZenBook 16. That is likely because that laptop is thicker and is able to consistently feed its processor more power. More on this later. However, looking at the multi-core score of the ProArt, it is second only behind the much more expensive MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro 12-core chip. That being said, Intel's best performing Core Ultra 9 and Qualcomm's X Elite are really not that far behind. In Cinebench, which tests how these laptops perform under max load, it's an even better story for the Zen 5. The HX370 in the ProArt is neck and neck with the MacBook Pro 14 with a higher end M3 Pro 12 core chip. And it ties with the Snapdragon X Elite in the Slim 7X. By the way, we were very careful as to which laptops we chose to compare to in these graphs. We tried to pick an example of each of the major CPUs in laptops that are capable of delivering representative best performance. Anyway, once again, the Zen 5 processors are second only to Apple's M3 in single core performance, but you can clearly see a huge variance in multi-core scores. This reinforces that the performance of these new chips is going to depend a lot on what laptop they are in and how much power that laptop can feed to them. And with that said, let's look at PowerDraw. 
Here you can clearly see why the ProArt performs so well. It is able to sustain around 50 watts of power. And when it comes to the ZenBook 16, you can see here it only draws 33 watts, which actually makes its lower performance scores make more sense. In fact, it appears to be quite power efficient. As power efficiency is the primary factor that determines how hot your laptop will feel, how noticeable and annoying its fans will be, how long it lasts on battery, and even to some extent how it performs, we're going to double click in. To analyse this, we bring you my favourite graph. We plotted the results of each of these laptops and many more comparables so that you can get a clear picture of what's going on. The blue dots are Intel's Core Ultra 7 and 9 processors, the red are AMD's older Zen 4, the purple are these new AMD Zen 5 laptops, gold are Qualcomm's, and white represents Apple's. The lines that join each dot together are for laptops where we could manually adjust power fed to their processors. The others were measured by running the laptop on each of their various performance modes. Best battery tends to feed the laptops less power. Best performance feeds them more. For all these results, we measured the average watts that the processor drew during a Cinebench multi-core test. Unfortunately for the Snapdragon laptops, Qualcomm doesn't allow developers to measure power draw. My gut is because they don't want you to know that these just aren't as efficient as their marketing department is claiming. So what we did instead is measure their power draw from the wall and then subtract 12 watts for the rest of the laptop. In prior videos, we only subtracted 7. After those videos, we tested a ton more similar laptops with Intel and AMD. The way we came up with that number is that when the laptops were fully charged, we ran Cinebench and measured power draw used by their CPUs. We then subtracted it from the power that they drew from the wall. 12 watts was the most common delta. Now, the way to read this graph is that you want to see less power draw but higher performance. As you can see, these new AMD Zen 5 chips are significantly more power efficient. When they perform the same as their prior generation, they draw around 10 to 20 watts less power. That is amazing! You can also see that they are almost identical to Qualcomm's new Snapdragon chips. However, Apple's M3 processors are still in the lead. By the way, if you're wondering why we don't do such a test with other benchmarks, it's because they just aren't as dependent on power draw. For example, if you look at Geekbench, you can see that on average it just doesn't have the CPU drawing that much power. It does spike a bit for short bursts, but it really doesn't use that much on average. Boy, we spent a lot of time putting these tests together for you. Let's take a look at some laptop dependent test results. Here are the CPU temperatures that we measured. You can see here that putting a powerful Zen 5 processor in a very slim laptop like the ZenBook 16 results in it running hot. That being said, Intel processors still get the hottest. The ProArt on the other hand doesn't get that hot, which is great to see given how crazy good its performance is, but more on that later. Switching to heat you feel during a max performance test, the ZenBook 16s get really hot. They are a very slim laptop as I've said, so it's not surprising. This is one of the reasons that I said up front that just dropping one of these N5 processors in a laptop doesn't necessarily make it a fantastic buy for everyone. This laptop is best used for light tasks, even though its processor is clearly capable of more. The Pro Arts, on the other hand, manages the heat you feel much better. It remains pretty cool to the touch during this load. And it is significantly cooler than the Slim 7X with Qualcomm's XLE chip. That being said, in all fairness, that laptop is much thinner. Now, when we look at fan noise, you can see why the ProArt does so well in high performance tasks. Its fans are very loud. But I want to add that in real world use, the ProArt's fan noise was actually pretty good. What we found is that the fans would turn on loud the moment you did a performance task, but the moment you finished, they would become very quiet, almost unnoticeable. And keep in mind, all these measurements were on the laptop's highest performance modes. On the ProArt's default standard mode, it is still very powerful, but it is quieter. Alright, let's talk battery life. For light use, the ZenBook S16s with their Zen 5 processors delivered some of the best battery results we've ever recorded. I am surprised that our model with the more powerful HX processor actually beat out the one with the less powerful chip. Perhaps that is due to the more powerful chip having additional low power cores. The ProArt unfortunately, it did not perform that well. Keep in mind, it does have a powerful Nvidia RTX 4050 inside. This is likely the culprit. What's odd though is that we specifically turned off the dedicated graphics using Asus's Eco Mode before running this test. We even confirmed it was off in Task Manager. My guess is that Asus unfortunately is still sending it some power. Before we move on, look how far we've come with regards to battery life from Intel's 13th generation from last year, the ZenBook 14X with the 13700H. Alright, switching to running performance tasks when on battery. It is a similar situation. These Zen 5 processors perform very well, especially considering that the ZenBook 16 has to power a large high resolution display. 
On that note, that is likely the reason that the ZenBook 14 with AMD's older Zen 4 processor performs so well here. That laptop has a low resolution 14 inch panel. Every other laptop here has a high resolution one. We have a short out demonstrating how much better low resolution panels are when it comes to battery life. I'll link that one down below. Now, you may have heard me call out how much worse Snapdragon processor's power efficiency becomes at higher wattage. You can really see that here. Even though the 7X has a decent sized battery, it just doesn't last as long as these other laptops. All right, let's switch over to integrated graphics starting with Wildlife, which is a cross-platform benchmark. Here we see that the new 890M is the highest performing integrated graphics other than Apple's M3. But Qualcomm's XLE processor performs really well here too. Now in Time Spy, which is a DirectX 12 gaming benchmark, Intel's Arc graphics comes out on top. However, this new 890M is still a decent step forward for AMD from their older 780M. By the way, this test can't be run on a Snapdragon laptop. So that's why the Slim 7X is missing from this test. In Cyberpunk, a real world gaming benchmark, the lead flips with the AMD Zen 5 graphics coming out on top. And taking a look at Geekbench's compute score that leverages the integrated GPU, it is a similar story with the 890M out on top for Windows laptops, but again, behind Apple's M3. Now, when it comes to Puget's Premiere Pro video editing benchmark, you can see that the new Zen 5 graphics performs very well, almost at the level of Apple's M3. Unfortunately, we couldn't run this benchmark using only the integrated graphics of the Pro Art. I would have expected that that laptop's 890M integrated graphics performs even better. So, overall, when it comes to integrated graphics, AMD is either at the top or close to it out of every Windows laptop. However, none of these integrated graphics come close to the performance of Nvidia's dedicated RTX 4050, which is at the lower end of their offering. And lastly, if you are running AI tasks on your laptop, here are the manufacturer's stated MPU scores. AMD appears to have taken the crown from Qualcomm, but none of these come close to what Nvidia brings to the table. By the way, we are a growing company. Hopefully soon we can code a custom test to help us verify these numbers. All right, that was a lot of data. I won't repeat my conclusions as I've already said them at the beginning of this video. The only thing I'll add is that I really appreciated AMD's approach to marketing these chips. Rather than overpromise and hype everyone up like Qualcomm did, they gave us no information at all and just let the products speak for themselves. Finally, you know what I'm going to ask for. Make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell on because we are on a mission to find the best AMD Zen 5 laptops. So over the next couple of weeks, we will be reviewing a ton of them. And if you're unaware, we post our notes of laptops we're currently testing on our website. That way you can read what we think of them before our full videos are published. And if you're looking for the best laptop to buy right now, you'll find that on the site too, as well as where to go to get the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and we will catch you later.